our corporate data from the IP phones. So we started doing voice over IP vulnerability assessments and controls validations, and we discovered that we were able to gain administrative access to servers in the data center through the phone. So we did a, a, a security focus article where we kind of detailed it a little bit, where we could go into a hotel that had voice over IP, plug into the hotel phone, and get into their corporate network and record the phone calls of the president, for example, get into their uh, accounting system, all that kind of stuff, through a network that was supposed to be logically separated and secure from their corporate network. So these physically isolated locations where these phones are, everybody thinks they're secure, but you're not watching them. If, if somebody's in their hotel room, they have access to that, you can't be watching them, and that's a, a pretty big concern. So uh, this is the tool. This is a screenshot. Uh, it's available on SourceForge, and you'll see that later. This is a new version done just uh, for Shmoocom. We showed the version 1 at Torcon uh, last year, and this is a brand new version that Jason's been working on for the past few weeks to demonstrate specifically to you. So I'm going to turn it over to Jason Ostrom, author of Voip Hopper. What up? I'm Jason. Give me here. That doesn't work, so you just have to speak loud. So I'm going to show you something that I haven't shown anyone before, something I'm really passionate about. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the genesis of, of this tool, Void Popular that I wrote. In essence, this tool is just a, uh, basically it, it tags an Ethernet frame header, the voice VLAN ID, and does a VLAN hop. So it's basically a VLAN security test tool customized uh, to a VoIP environment. And um, so what we're looking at here is uh, in a typical customer scenario, um, what I normally work with is, is customers that. Um, they have like a back-end trunk, and this is specific to remote IP phone deployments, um, like in lobbies, where anywhere where there's low physical security, and uh, there's a back-end network trunk into the internal network, and network administrators aren't thinking about well, what happens if a PC is disconnected, or the phone is disconnected from the network, and um, the PC is directly connected, and then the PC tags its Ethernet frame header to get access and uh, a lot of customers are not even doing uh, the proper filtering like a firewall at these remote locations. So once you're a phone, you have full access to the network and that's what we found here. Like I said, um, we're tagging the Ethernet frame header um, and there's some stuff that we're doing in the beginning uh, for the voice VLAN discovery. We're really attacking the network infrastructure, the uh, device discovery protocol that's used, CDP, and then we're gonna talk about Avaya. I'm gonna have to go through this really quick. This is really about attacking the network infrastructure security. I want to be clear on what this is. Poor network design. Um, it's not about exploiting Cisco Unified Communication Manager or the exploiting the Avaya platform. Um, these are the specific threats that I see. Once a PC gets access into the voice VLAN, there's never a good reason for that to happen, in my mind. And uh, so you can do denial of service against the IP phones. That's trivial. There's myriad tools out there to do that. Um, if the firewall is properly <coughs> implemented, there's going to be certain ports that have to be open in order for the IP phones to talk to the, uh, the PBX, and you can always attack those signaling ports all day long once you have access to the, uh, the voice VLAN. The third thing, and this is the most critical, is um, if they don't have a firewall between the voice VLAN protecting from the rest of the network, then you've got full access into the internal customer network. And, uh, and actually sitting on an internal customer network, most customers trust the internal users that they're not going to VLAN hop into that IP phone network. But really, what you can do is you can plug your laptop in the back of the uh, phone and uh, get access into the voice VLAN and just cause the denial of service so the phone network doesn't even work. Okay, here's my demo. We're going to go through this real quick. Um, I got a Catalyst 3560 power Ethernet switch. I've got the Backtrack Linux distribution running on an attacker laptop. And I have a Cisco Unified IP phone. The voice VLAN is 200. The PC VLAN is 100, and you can denote the IP addressing there. Okay, let's jump into the uh, demo here. Okay, the first function of VoIP Hopper is if you're a network administrator, you can easily just test the VLAN security if you already know the VVID, the voice VLAN ID. So we're going to go, let's see, make sure on our Ethernet interface. where it's uh, E0. So we go VoIP hopper, specify the interface, and then the VLAN ID I already know is 200 since I'm a network administrator. So uh, 
There we go. We're in the voice VLAN. We got 200.0 network. So we see, let's do an IF config. And we see that we have the, uh, the newly created voice VLAN interface. So VoIP Hopper is um, in the voice VLAN right now. Now one new, interf new feature that I did for, for this uh, presentation is I created a, uh, where you could, basically a feature where you could delete the voice VLAN interface so you can easily test this and you can script in between this. So all day long I can um, create the new interface and then delete it, okay? So another new feature of VoIP Hopper is um, I, can I can do MAC address spoofing where um, offline, so we can take the MAC address of the PC right now and we can um, change the MAC address. Like if I don't want to connect to the Ethernet port before I've spoofed the MAC address, then I can just do this. So I don't want to spoof the phone's MAC address because I'll, I'll get disconnected from the network here. So anyways, we see that it's, it, Boy Popper complains that it's the same MAC address. Okay, now jumping on to Avaya. Uh, DHCP discovery. So let's take a look at Avaya. The new, the flag for Avaya is, let me check this. Okay, the, this is the Avaya flag, and when, I'm going to show what it does here. All right, so we see here what's going on here. Let's take a look at this. Um, basically, in an Avaya environment, um, there's a special DHCP coded uh, client that uh, VoIP Popper has to send, and the DHCP server is provisioned for that. Right here, we see. So this is my DHCP server configuration here. And basically, the fascinating thing about this, and I think it's really an elegant solution, is Avaya has it configured where this custom DHCP client is sent. It requests the uh, option 55 in the parameter request list. And then the DHCP server responds back with 200. Um, I could show a, a packet sniff on that, but I'm, I'm running out of time on this. So I'm just going to skip over that. But I will say that my favorite gem uses Avaya IP telephony. And I'm really fascinated about going in there and doing like a social engineering where I can pretend like I'm the phone, you know, custom repair guy. Uh, but I think I'd be thrown off by the cute girls in the gym. So um, it's, uh, it's always nice when I'm the only person in the room that finds something amusing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about Cisco here. Let's jump into that world. Um, this guy right here, we were working on a uh, 802.1x bypass. And basically, this is the new feature of VoIP Hopper. Uh, Cisco, basically, 802.1x enabled ports, would, along with voice VLAN feature, um, you can bypass that via CDP. So let's go ahead and plug that in and do this really quick here. Yeah, 40 minutes or 30 minutes. OK. So the phone, I'm going to plug into port 2. We're going to run a, we're running actually a capture here as well. We've been disconnected here. Okay, so now we see here that the switch has recognized the IP phone and it's now operational on the port. Now I'm completely locked out of the, of the um, attack machine. You can't see anything because we've got, let's take a look at this port configuration. <coughs> Okay, this is the voice, this is the uh, 802.1x configuration. We have port control auto right here, that's for 802.1x, and I'm only allowing, I also have MAC address filtering enabled, I'm only allowing the MAC address of the, uh, of the IP phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this right now. Let's uh, actually show, I'm guessing here that the, that the IP phone is 200.2. Okay, that is, so the IP phone's connected, I can ping the IP phone, let's disconnect the IP phone. Let's plug in VoIP Hopper, PC. VoIP Hopper is part of Backtrack 3, too. It's Look being compiled on that. Ports configured is now operational. VoIP Hopper is only connected. See, we have the phone totally disconnected from the network. And, okay. 